Okay, we're going to talk about how to reduce stress. First thing, a little bit about what is stress, sympathetic autonomic nervous system, SANS, sympathetic autonomic nervous system, Symp together like a symphony, the ganglia are together, thoracolumbar, parasympathetic autonomic nervous system is cranial sacral, they're sort of separ separated. Um, and basically you want to spend as much time of your life as you can in PANS, parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. It's also called feed and breed. It's also called rest and digest. Sometimes the SANS, that's also known as fight or flight, is the accelerator, if you will, and PANS is the brake, if you will. Um, so in PANS is when your muscles are building, if you're lifting weights, that's when you get stronger, is when you're recovering. Um, that's when you're enjoying a meal, spending time with friends and family, happy times. So we all have to work a lot, we're all stressed about plenty of things, but try to get as much time as you can in PANS. The way to we can remember most things for SAN, sympathetic autonomic nervous system, is being chased by a tiger in the dark. Your eyes dilate, you got to get blood flow to your muscles, um, you shut down everything long term. You don't need to worry about your immune system, you don't need to worry about an infection, you need to survive the next 5-10 minutes. So it's made for an acute physical response. But in the modern world, us humans have a lot of chronic psychological stress, and that can be problematic. During a stress response, you get increased catecholamines like adrenaline, noradrenaline, and those increase your blood pressure, increase your heart rate to get your energy ready faster, you know, and they help get uh, more free fatty acids into your blood, more glucose, cortisol especially is a big thing really that increases your glucose in your blood because you need a lot more blood glucose when you're having intense physical activity under stress. The only problem is chronic stress, you'll have chronic elevated blood glucose and it actually causes insulin resistance, so you don't want chronic stress if you can avoid it. You want to minimize it as best you can. Caffeine basically mimics the acute stress response, it increases catecholamine, uh, hormones and increases cortisol. So the point is, it's good to avoid caffeine. I quit caffeine completely and I'm happy that I did. Uh, for about 15 or more years I was drinking two cups a day and I finally decided to quit it all. I feel better. I feel like I sleep more deeply now after having done that. Um, your by the way, I got a book on caffeine. Here it is. If you want to read all the studies on caffeine, it's in this book called Caffeine Blues. Um, he's a little, I think he overdoes it a little bit, but still it's hard to find all the studies if you're curious about it. But this is the main thing you got to know. It's just going to be all the permutations of this. Your perception determines your stress level. So what that means is if you see something in a negative way, you're going to feel more negative about it versus if you perceive it in a positive way, that can lower your stress level. For example, when I was a fellow in interventional radiology, um, nobody wanted to present in front of the vascular surgeons because they were kind of rough on the interventional radiologists. I saw it as an opportunity. How often do I get to talk to a vascular surgeon? So I uh, presented. So what if I got criticized? I learned a lot when I was a young fellow at that time. Um, now, having an attitude of gratitude, what's that about? You know, count your blessings, what you're lucky for. For example, one of my kids was whining the other day about having to study so much. I said, you know what? You're lucky you have a chance to get educated. For all the history of the world, most people had to do manual labor all day long trying to grow some food so they don't starve to death. Being able to spend your day sitting around looking at a book, that's really a pretty unique, wonderful opportunity compared to most people in the history of this world. Um, so having an attitude of gratitude, you know, at least I'm healthy, I'm still alive, things could be a lot worse, it puts you into more of a parasympathetic state, more into pans, okay, for recovery. Forgive your resentments, all right, um, because you then relieve yourself of your emotional burdens, you know, like, for example, my dog tried to run away today, I grabbed my dog and he bit me. I'm not mad at my dog, I just say it's a stupid dog, he bit me, okay? And by sort of saying I'm not mad that the dog behaved bad, I'm, I, I'm glad that you know the dog didn't run away, I didn't waste an hour chasing him. And what I'm trying to say is by internalizing that and sort of in a sense just saying you can't blame a dog, dog's stupid, he's gonna, he's, he didn't like it when I caught him so he wasn't running away, he just instinctively reacted. The point is there's no resentment there, okay? And that is good in your relationships with people. Um, avoid negative people to the extent you can. Uh, avoid negative TV shows to the extent you can. Um, have a purpose in your life. When you have a purpose in your life, it focuses all your energy. In order to achieve anything, do anything worthwhile, you have to focus your energy. You only have a limited amount of energy. So, for example, if I'm excited about writing a book or giving a lecture or whatever it is that I'm excited about, it's sort of like if everything else that day is screwed up, I don't care. At least I got this one thing I'm excited about. And that helps you to sort of stay happy. I knew that I had a big transition in my life from when I was a young guy, kind of self-centered, 
and then you get older and you realize nobody really cares about you and you just try to do the best you can, get through the day, be nice, you know. Um, I felt sort of more at ease. It was a good thing to have that change of mindset. Having wife and kids really teaches you to sort of see the world from other perspectives rather than your own. You know, young guys normally kind of selfish focused on what he's trying to do. Um, so have a purpose in life makes you lower stress. Maintain good relationships with people. Try to get along with people, you know. When you're ready to die, you're going to remember your relationships with people, friends and family. You're not going to remember a lot of these little minor things that might stress you out, you know, on a daily basis. So just sort of make the most of the situation, but don't take that stuff too seriously. Get your sleep, because if you don't sleep, your body perceives that as stress, and it'll crank up your cortisol, your catecholamines, and have all those unhealthy things happening. When your cortisol is high, it, it impairs your wound healing, your healing of anything. Your brain cleans itself, etc. You need to get your sleep. So key thing to go and get more sleep, a lot of things. Avoid MSG, avoid caffeine, go to bed early every night. Um, exercise relieves stress. You sort of take your whatever frustrations or excess energy, anxiety, and you put it into your exercise, that works. I like Stoic philosophy. I like the Marcus Aurelius quote, a man should be like a cliff facing the ocean and all day long the waves beat against his ankles but the rock is not moved. So what that basically says to me is, I don't take all this little stuff seriously. There's always gonna be ups and downs. I used to sometimes expect the most out of everybody. No, I don't. Now I'm just happy if they don't totally screw up, if they just do a minimally competent job. And I know that I get along better with people now that I'm not so fussy. Um, so that's sort of the Marcus Aurelius quote, former emperor of Rome, around 180 AD. Epictetus has a good quote too. He's a Greek slave. A lot of the Greek philosopher types were slaves of the Romans for a while before they later he got his freedom. But basically he would say things like, you know, sort of a mediocre person sort of blames fate in their life. An average person blames himself, oh, I screwed up. And he says a really highly functioning person says, okay, here's a problem. Other people have overcome this problem through doing these things. I shall try to do the same. So uh, the sort of solution oriented person. Religion can be very um, uh, pleasant for some people. So if that works for you, that could be a good thing for you. A lot of the healthiest people in the world have, uh, that's been very important to them. Uh, having a hobby or doing something creative, if you like to draw, if you like to paint, if you like to write, if you like to play music, one can get a sense of achievement and a sense of peace and a sense of serenity and beauty from that. So that's all helpful. So the bottom line is you want to do whatever it takes to get yourself in a parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, sort of a pleasant, peaceful mood as best you can. And a great example is Jill Bolt Taylor. She's a lady who wrote that book, Stroke of Insight. What did she do? She was a Harvard neuroanatomist who was hemiplegic after a stroke. She had to have a craniotomy, by the way. She went and lived with her mother, okay, so she could sleep 12 hours a day. She just tried to do a little more physical activity every day. She made a complete recovery. It took a couple years, but she got better. Most hemiplegic stroke patients don't get better, okay? They only get a little better. She, and they don't only rehab a couple of months. She rehabbed for years. So the point I'm saying is that was a perfect environment. Her mother loved her, was very supportive of her. She could sleep as much as she wanted. And she knew what she had to do is just try, she had a purpose, try to get a little more motor and uh, speech function back each day. So anyways, um, those are some tips on how to reduce stress. Hope it helps.